Hello and welcome to the Lieberland Show. I'm your host, Adam J. Carswell, and today we are joined by another very special guest, Mikkel Thorup. Mikkel is the Lieberland representative to Panama. This is actually breaking news, folks. It's the first public announcement of this, but um, you know, I've I've seen the the conversations taking place up until this moment. I can confirm it is true. He is our new representative to Panama for Lieberland. And Mikkel, it's an honor to finally have you here on the show. How are you doing today? Good, sir. And what are you looking forward to to diving into? Very happy to be here, Adam. And yeah, it's an exciting announcement. I'm very excited about. I think it's really great. You know, I got my Liberland residency a while ago, picked up my citizenship, um, very supportive of everything, and then got asked by Veet, by President Veet, to step up as the Panama representative. So I'm Canadian citizen, but I live down here in Panama, and I'm really excited about this. I think it's going to be a lot of fun and try to share some of my knowledge and expertise with your audience today and hopefully inspire some people. Absolutely. And folks, every now and then you 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 meet someone, especially running in these Lieberland related circles that we run and you meet someone that you go, wow, they've really kind of figured out how to navigate this crazy matrix that we're living in and, and create the most possible freedom for themselves and those around them. Mikkel really embod- embodies that. So we're we're going to have a fun ride here today, get to know him, what he's working on and beyond. Um, and then speaking of what he's working on, I do know there's something he's very excited about. So we're going to plug this multiple times throughout the interview. We might as well start with it. Um, you have a summit right around the corner, right? So tell us a little bit about that and where people can go for more information. Indeed, we're running an online summit. It's uh, expatmoneysummit.com. Uh, I'm really excited about this. It's going to be November 7th to 11th. Tickets are actually free. So if you guys are into anything that we're discussing today, you can go and grab a free ticket at expatmoneysummit.com. There is a VIP option if you're looking for a whole heap of extra bonuses and, and extras and all this other cool stuff that we're going to include, then I encourage you to pick that up. But if you're not sure about these things, about internationalization or moving to another country or flag theory or foreign investments, if you're just starting to get your feet wet, then grab the free ticket. I'm happy to take care of fellow Liberlanders. And um, yeah, we've got some amazing speakers. We've got Dr. Ron Paul, who will be speaking. Uh, my friend Doug Casey is speaking at the event. We just got confirmation that Jim Rogers will be at the event as well. So heaps of really big names and then a ton of people you probably don't know their names. That's because these are the lawyers and the accountants that I work with in my company to help move people offshore and legally reduce their taxes and everything like that. And Vit Yalika will also be speaking at the event as well. That's been confirmed. So lots of really great people. That's at expatmoneysummit.com. Love it. And yeah, thank you, Mikkel. And thank you for hosting it, putting together. Um, I think now more than ever, we need opportunities like this to connect with people who see the world through the same lens in which we do. And there's really never been a better time to do so. We won't get too distracted on this topic, but Mikkel and I happen to be in, we'll call it a a recurring Zoom meeting that's been a lot of fun. And if it wasn't for the quote unquote chaos that the world has gone through for the past couple of years, then we probably we probably wouldn't know each other. So it's cool to see what, you know, what opportunities are arising and and yeah, there's there's never been a better time to meet and connect with people who who think the way we do. So uh, thank you for doing that. And we might ask a few more questions about the summit here throughout today's interview. But one more time, it was expat money. Yeah, expatmoneysummit.com. And you guys can grab the free ticket there. And yeah, Adam, you and I have been on a call pretty much every week for six We're months. Now, so I've <laughs> so I've really uh, you know, consider you one of my close friends these days. So I'm really happy to be here today and and to have today's conversation because you do such excellent work. And you know, I really commend you for your dedication to Liberland and to being a face out there and really spreading freedom and prosperity and peace. Like it's just so, so important. So thank you for the hard work you do. My pleasure. My pleasure. And I think, um, well, for those who do watch the show pretty consistently, you'll see there's been an uptick in production lately. And I think we're going to keep this momentum rolling. Uh, we had a guest speaker uh, in this group that that Mikkel and I are in, um, who recently shared, uh, I, I don't want to share his name just in case, but like he basically said, look, the way that we're going to change the world, guys, is you get out there and you speak your truth. The more you can speak your truth, I know it sounds kind of simple and cliche, but the more you can do it, the more you can inspire change. And so um, that really, I feel like lit a fire under my butt and and I'm happy to keep the keep the momentum rolling here with you. So, uh, Mikkel, when did this all, when did this whole, you know, 
I don't even want to label it libertarian, to be honest, because I think it's so much more than just a libertarian journey, but uh, free thinking journey for you. When did it begin? Because I know a lot of us have that, like that breaking point, the red pill moment, if you will. When did it first happen for you? Yeah. So for my story, I have to go quite far back in time, but I will, I will try to make it as concise and, uh, and yeah, as concise as possible. So Adam, what happened was when I was a child, I was diagnosed with a learning disability and the teacher pulled me out of class and they sat me down in a little room and the principal and the vice principal and maybe a resource teacher was there. And they said, uh, Mikkel, something doesn't work quite right in your brain. And what we want to do is send you to a special school, special school for special boys. So that's what they did every day for three years. I got on a little white bus, took a little white bus across town and I went to this quote unquote special school. Now, the only problem was it actually was not a special school. It was a regular school with a special class. So you can probably imagine what happened. I got in a ton of fights. I got picked on. I got bullied. Now, this is no woe is me. I'm a victim. Poor Mikkel. Poor Mikkel. Certainly not. I mean, I got hit and I hit back and I hit back twice as hard if I could. So I would never claim otherwise. And I absolutely hate victim mentality. But um, after three years of going to this school and having a pretty terrible experience, I got to go back to my neighborhood school. And I thought, wow, this is going to be so amazing. My friends, they will have missed me so much. Everyone's going to be so curious what happened. And day one of school, you can probably imagine what happened. I showed up and all the kids started gossiping and whispering. So, oh, I know, Mikkel, he went to some retard school. Thanks, guys. Totally politically correct. Very sensitive. You know how sensitive children are. Um, so yeah, it just really left a bad taste in my mouth for public education. And, um, and I stopped going. And when I stopped going, I started failing and then they'd push me into summer school and then I would fail that. And somehow I would get into the next year and then I'd fail that long story short, uh, at 12 years old, I stopped going to school and at 15, I officially dropped out and I never went back. I actually started traveling internationally shortly after that. And when I moved overseas and started exploring the world, I met all these incredible people who were doing things so completely different than anything I had seen in, in Canada. And I saw that there really is, only, is not only one way to learn something or build a business or grow your knowledge or anything like that. And more than that, they didn't know about my quote unquote learning disability. You know, I was able to you know, build my life and create my life how I wanted it. And a side note, I mean, my learning disability is I'm dyslexic. So it's not really a big deal whatsoever. You know, in this day and age, we know that, but, you know, 1980s, you know, it seemed to be this really, really big thing. But um, fast forward for the last 22 years straight, I have been traveling the world. Um, I've circumnavigated the globe over 400 times. I've visited, I think we're up to 110 countries now, and I've lived in nine different countries. So I don't mean I've gone on you know, 22 years of all-inclusive resorts. I mean, I've been really <laughs> right. traveling and exploring the planet and seeing things from different people's perspective. But um, I would say that, you know, libertarianism with certainly a, a lowercase l or, or ANCAP or, you know, you know these type of mentality or, or philosophical belief, I think it really started for me as a child and seeing public education and what that was and how it was based on violence and coercion and really did not have my best interests at heart. So I'd say I'm pretty much a lifelong libertarian and uh, it's my North Star. I mean, I built my entire life, my family, my business, everything around the, the concepts of peace and prosperity, freedom and liberty. And, and that's it. That's that's me. It's uh, everything that I do and it, it is put through this lens, you could say. Yeah, I, I love that your your education came through travel, through living out experiences, something that um, I'm not quite near 110 countries. And that definitely sounds like something I'd, I want to continue to strive towards. But you just you learn so much when you get an opportunity to see what's really out there beyond anything a school could ever teach you. It's, you know, instead of memorization, it's like actual doing. And you figured that out at a young age, almost by, you know, people just telling you, hey, you don't fit in this system. And I love that you didn't embrace that victim mentality. Like many people don't do what you did, which is they just take take the L's, they take the losses and they write the rest of their life off saying, oh, I guess I am a screw up. You persevered. And now it's like, you know, you've just paved this new path for so many other people. But I guess what I want to zone in on is for you. Um, there still had to be a moment. I think maybe you said for you it was around like 20 or when you were 15, um, when you did start to realize 
like I'm, I'm advancing, like my mind and my career, everything that I'm doing is growing from these situations I'm putting myself in now. So I'm just wondering, was it that first trip, like right when you went somewhere or like, when did it really start to make sense? So good question. I mean, from the libertarian side, certainly when I was a child and I stopped going to school when I was 12 years old, obviously I did know, not know what the word libertarianism meant. And I didn't know, you know, that everything would turn out right. Like, I mean, it'd be great if I could, you know, claim that, yeah, I had everything figured out when I was 12 years old. No, of course I didn't. I was a stupid little kid. But what I did know was the situation was wrong, you know, and it was based on violence and I had to get out of it. So I peacefully removed myself from the situation. Actually, so could you elaborate? Um, I think I know what you mean, but you said based on violence a couple of times. So for anyone who might not understand what you're saying there, what do you mean by, by based on Public violence? Public education is a prison system. I mean, you're, you're told to sit in a chair and you have to ask permission to go to the bathroom. You have to do this rote memorization, which we know is the absolute worst way for learning something. And if your brain works completely different, you know, like I'm very much an audio person, you know, you've got a podcast, I've got a podcast, the expat money show. I'm very much an auditory type of learner, but I was told that there was something wrong with me. And I was made to felt there was something wrong with me because I process information in a different way. Now, eight hours a day for years on end, it's just trying to teach you to be compliant. It's teach you how to be a factory worker, to do as you're told, and that's it. And we have these, you know, even with higher education, so much of it is based on specialization in one distinct field, but nothing else. So you get these like 25-year-olds who can't tie their own shoe. They couldn't, can't cook themselves a meal. They can't balance a checkbook. They have no idea about compound interest. They don't know how to make money, create money, multiply money, anything like this. They can't take care of themselves. They're like perpetual children throughout their lives. You know, I started working when I was 12 years old. You know, I have a lot of self-confidence. That's based on the fact that I've had to do everything for myself. And if we look back through history and what people were doing at 14, 15, 16 years old, they were running countries. They were at the front of the vanguard and armies. And now we don't have people who can't tie their shoes. Like, it's just ridiculous. It is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, I think, um, well, you, you mentioned creating creating money. Um, and that's how I like to put it too. you know, a lot of this, not to get too um, hippy dippy, I guess you could yeah, say, but you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, you gotta manifest what you want. Um, I heard a good quote the other day, you know, your mind, you know, you, someone's like, you know how, how a 3d printer works? It's like, your mind is a 3d printer. And I'm like, man, that is true. Um, and so one thing that's not covered at all in traditional or higher education is financial creation or management. Um, I think the the most that anyone's encouraged is, hey, make sure when you go make the money that you do make that you give it to a financial advisor because they know what's best for you and they're gonna they're gonna help you retire by the time you're seventy and that's gonna be good. So, how do you break the mold as far as money creation and preservation? So I got big into finance when I was in my late twenties. You know, I had been traveling and I had been earning money at whatever random job, and just started reading and researching and just geeking out on everything finance related. I actually got really big into derivatives trading. So I was trading options for about seven years and, and I did very well for a while as well. I also blew up my portfolio a couple of times, <laughs> which is, you know, its own learning experience in its exactly. own right, you know, but um, those are, you know, real stakes. There's nothing like learning it yourself. I am a big proponent from either learning from books from people who have actually done something, you know, opposed to a textbook, you know, which is just theoretical or learning from my experiences, like we've been talking about or mentorship. You know, we have a lot of guys in, in our private men's group that we were discussing before who would, I would, I would consider mentors of mine who I, you know, some of these guys are 70, 80 years old and the opportunity to learn from them and to listen to them speak about the world is really fantastic. So I've been really blessed throughout my life for a lot of mentorship. You know, I'm not a kid anymore. I, I have a couple of children of my own. I'm almost 40, but uh, I still look to people who have more experience than I do in specific fields and, and try to be humble enough to learn, you know, not try to be some cocky young, uh, young star, you know, who thinks he knows everything. I certainly don't. You have to be very humble and you have to go through these things. So, yeah, so I started learning finance and, um, and just trying to learn about it from every, every way possible from people who have built real fortunes in their life. And, um, after 
after studying this for many years, for me, the, the linchpin has been entrepreneurship to be able to create mm. value in the marketplace and have people freely exchange um, their dollars or great British pounds or, you know, Swiss francs or whatever it might be with my knowledge and expertise in, in going offshore, which is, you know, I am a true blue expert in this after 22 years of doing it. I can really say that I, I really have a, a very firm grasp on these types of things. So does all that make sense? Yes. Yes. And you're, you know, you're a master uh, salesman and marketer too, from my observation, <laughs> just the fact that you followed up your statement statement with, does that make sense? Um, I find myself, does that make sense? Sound good? You know, that's what you got to say if you're a, a wizard. <laughs> so anyways, um, I like that you zoned in on mentorship because that's an experience that I've been able to kind of live out through, through my entrepreneurial journey is identifying the people that I want to be like learning what I can from them and then either working alongside them to get to where I want to go or, you know, whatever comes from it. I just had a phone call yesterday actually with, um, a foreigner who's made his way to the U S he's worked really hard to finally get this work visa. And now that he's got it, you know, his dream when he, I remember talking to him a couple of years ago and he wanted to start his own business or become a realtor or whatever, something that would be more entrepreneurial. And now that he's got this visa, he's like, man, I really want to get a job. And I can't blame him because it's like, you know, he worked hard to get it. He wants to make sure he can stay in the US. But I know that truly the fastest way to financial freedom, period, is through entrepreneurship. And so I guess like, we'll just use this as an example. And and I promise to my friend, if you ever listen to this, I'm not, we're not going to drop your name here. But um, you know, I want to help him, but I want to help him in the long run too. So it's like, I want to help him find a good job. But again, if you really want to get to that level of financial freedom that, you know, Mikel, for yourself, as an example, you find yourself in, in one day, I mean, how do you, you're like, okay, I want to be an entrepreneur, but like, where do you go from there? Like, how do you, how do you get to that next level? Is it directly through a mentor? Like you explained, or like, I think a lot of people just want the blueprint because they hear how sexy it is, but no one knows how to actually get there. Yeah, I mean, my business is not teaching people how to be entrepreneurs, but I can tell you what's worked for me. Um, you know, I have done an immense amount of study on many different things, many different fields uh, and, and different disciplines. Um, what I personally did with my business is try to find the things that I really enjoy and that I was already an expert in and that people would pay for. I think that a lot of entrepreneurs get started trying to create a business where there's no marketplace for it. Or if there is a marketplace, there's no margins for it. You know, the field that I'm in is highly, highly, highly specialized. There's very few human beings in the world who know these types of things and have this type of experience. With that allows me to charge, you know, pretty high fees for my services. And with high fees, I can devote a lot of time and energy and effort to my clients. So I think it's a combination of things that you are already an expert in so that you can leverage, you know, existing time or, or, or study. And then, you know, looking at the marketplace and finding where there's holes and something that actually has the margins for it. You know, it's these types of three things that really, when you figure it out, this recipe and put it all together, yeah, you can go from very little money to millions in, in, you know, in a short couple of years. And um, that's been my experience uh, throughout this journey. Yeah. Um, speaking of margins, too, I think this would be my, my two cents for anyone who is thinking about taking their career in entrepreneurial direction. You, you want to go where they're the, the more, obviously the margins are the most significant and um, what you, the service you provide to my knowledge, Mikel is one that is going to be continuously scalable for you because it does come, a lot of it just comes down to what you know and who you know, being able to provide that for your clients, right? Like instead of selling water bottles, which can be, you know, <laughs> determined by the marketplace, you kind of set the price. Yeah, I don't like commodity type of businesses. My business is a personality driven business. If you guys are on my newsletter at expatmoney.com, then you will get my newsletter and you will hear this, <laughs> read the type of stuff that I write about. You know, it's my daily life of building a seven figure, you know, in the next couple of years, eight figure business around this. What am I doing in my life, my travels, you know, my failures, the, the ups and downs and everything like this? If you listen to the podcast, uh, you know, my podcast is called Expat Money Show. We've been going for six, going on seven years. There's like tons of stories in there that it's all personality driven. There's nothing that I ever want to do, which is commodity based. 
You know, I don't want you to be like, oh, I could use Mikel or I could go out there in the yellow pages and find someone completely different. No, there is one of me and there's only one of me and there'll only ever be one of me. This is a much better way to run a business. Yes, it can take time to get going, but I mean, it really speaks to, you know, the values and things like that because I get interviewed pretty much daily on a libertarian type of podcast or freedom oriented podcast, uh, you know, entrepreneurship podcast. So I'm already doing things that I like and I get to just be myself. And so you have that authenticity and that congruency through everything, which, you know, I enjoy. <laughs> I, I want to be myself. If I didn't want to be myself, I wouldn't be like this. You know, I would have shaped myself into a different type of human being. But being able to be honest and transparent and open about all these things, I think it's the best. Love it. Um so one more question, then we'll dive into some Liberland stuff. But for you and in, in your business, um, you mentioned roughly being in business, I think you said for about seven years, along that beautiful seven year journey. When was like the first breaking point where, where you were like, wow, I, I think I've gotten into something that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So that's a good question. So what happened was I was doing finance for about seven years. Then I got into entrepreneurship for two or three years and just crashed and burned at a couple of businesses and, you know, took my lumps at that point. Then pretty much maybe not day one, but, you know, within the first month or two of starting this business of expat money, you know, I started getting traction straight away. So we've been doing well from right at the beginning, but, you know, it's not an overnight success because I had the 10 years previous to that, doing other things that were getting me ready for this. Mm. So this, you know, it's, it's not fair to say, oh, you've, you've only been doing this for seven years and look, you're a multimillionaire and you've done all this, but it's like, no, it's the, you know, it's the 10 years before that. So say 17 years of investing in entrepreneurship. And then even more years before that of uh, traveling and exploring and being a guinea pig and looking at all these types of things. So it's actually a long period of time, but um you know, they stack. It's all cumulative. All of this type of knowledge, it's all cumulative. It's the compound interest effect. So true. I have um, someone, uh, another podcast that I listen to, and they're in episode 400 coming up to 500. And he recently put out a clip where he's like, wow, you know, I've been podcasting for five years and it wasn't until year five that my show really started hitting. Meaning like, you know, it's, 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 you can see from listening to it. It's a, I'll go ahead and plug it. It's called the game guys by Alex Hermosi. Check it out. It's pretty cool for, uh, for all the business professionals out there. But um, yeah, he's just talking about, he's seen some crazy returns from his time spent podcasting now in year number five, <laughs> the first four years were the preparation to get to where he needed to be. And uh, I just can't, can't emphasize that enough for anyone out there who's either doing this um, or pursuing some type of, you know, self-employed venture. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time before you get to that, that dream spot. And when you put that time in, when the opportunity comes, then you're prepared for it instead of not being prepared. So, well, the thing is, Adam, that you have to have the self-confidence to be able to do these things and then to invest in yourself, but it's hard to get the self-confidence if you're not getting any traction. Mm. So it's really this type of internal belief. If you believe in yourself, you're going to invest in yourself, you know, through education and books and conferences and masterminds and all these types of things. And now you're going to invest into your business, which can take like in your example, five years to really grow traction, but you have to do it. You have to consistently do it, show up every single day, knowing that you're worth it, that you believe in yourself enough that you're worthy enough for these types of things. So it's this really, you know, circular type of uh, mentality that has to go through. And it's not easy every day. I mean, it's certainly not, but I mean, the rewards are certainly there at the end. Yeah. Got it. You got to show up guys. That's the key. I mean, that's one of the keys show up every day. Um, so Mikel, you are now the Lieberland representative to Panama. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm really what, excited. uh, I was trying to make this not sound like a, what are your, what are the first things you're going to do as a politician <laughs> now? Um, but no, like what, uh, what do you have in mind over the next, I know you're super busy too with everything else we've talked about. So like over the next three months, do you have anything in mind to kind of get your fire started with Lieberland? 
Yeah, so we like to do a lot of uh, a lot of live events, um, meetups, things like this. Now, this is not the the traditional meetup. You just put something out for free, and everybody can show up. These are really highly specialized um, gatherings that we put on. Normally, it's only for private clients. So I have a, a quite a large book of business for my private con consulting clients, where I help them to move overseas. So that's the same type of thing that I want to do with Liberland here in Panama, is to kind of include a lot of the Liberland people when we do um, events. You know, we, my friends own a gold vault here, for example. So we take clients down there for a private tour, you know, something that most people never get a chance to see any time in their life. We do special cocktail uh, hours, you know, watch the sunset, get together, discuss what's going on, support the community. Um, we throw an annual Christmas party. Uh, last year's Christmas party, we had about 50 of my clients who came in. So I'd like to start including a lot of the Liberland people. Um, you know, I cover everything, all the food, the drinks, everything like that. And then we raise money for a nonprofit. I sit on the board of directors for a charity called 1018. It's uh, at 1018.com, or sorry, 1018.org. And, uh, you know, we support uh, teen mothers in the slums of Uganda, and we teach them entrepreneurial skills and how to get back on their feet and provide for their babies. So we raise a ton of money for things like that. So it's a lot of community and a lot of, you know, face-to-face -face type of things. So being able to include more people and bring them in and introduce my clients to Liberland and what's going on there, I think it's just, I think it's going to be fun because I really like spending time with like-minded people, you know? Life is too short to spend your time with shitty people, just to be blunt, you know? So I, I'm, I'm excited about this. I think it's going to be great. Yeah, you know, and I'm going to get a little bit distracted here, but um, this just ran through my head. So I'd like to know kind of your stance and how you feel about it. Um, it seems like in life on this journey, and I'll say the entrepreneurial journey as well, um, and I, know I was like, we're trying to go back to Liberland, but I'm going to go back this way real quick. <laughs> um, there's certain thresholds that you hit, like, <clears throat> like the just trying to survive threshold, then okay, like doing all right threshold, then maybe kind of balling out a little bit. And then, and then eventually you get to a level where, you know, if you need to, you know, you go buy something at the store, there's, there becomes a point in time where the dollar sign doesn't really matter. And you're kind of like, all right, what is my purpose and calling here? I've got this taken care of my friends, family, everyone's good. Um, and my observation is you're kind of either, just stepping into that realm or you maybe have already been there for a little bit. So like for you, now that it seems like you're getting to a point where quote unquote money doesn't matter as much, obviously you want to keep striving. Um, like where, where do you find like a lot of your fulfillment, you know? No. So good question. Um, as cliche as this might sound, I literally jump out of bed every morning. So excited to, to run my business. And that's because the whole business is based around starving the beast. And I can't think of a better calling in life than to fight the state and help people to legally reduce their taxes. Like I can look myself in the mirror straight in the eye and know that I am doing good work every single day. So yes, I am financially well off. There's no question about that. But I still have so much hunger and so much drive for these types of things because it has a real purpose that really fits within you know, my philosophical and moral and ethical beliefs. So every day that I get to do this is just such a gift. My problem is actually working too much. Like I've had mm. to set limits, you know? I have a gorgeous wife who I love and adore. I have two incredible children who I'm very blessed to have. You know, I need to be spending time with them. So I have a very strict, you know, you know, 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. or 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. And I don't work on the weekends. I take my nights and my weekends off and that's for family and that's it, you know? If I didn't have that family. I'd be working 14 hours a day, seven days a week, and I wouldn't burn myself out because actually this is my fun time. It is my enjoyment time and everything like that. But, um, you know, I really want to spend a lot of time with my family as well. Like, it's just so awesome having children. Um, I'm about to and, find out here pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't sure if I should say anything on that one. So I, I was we just had a meeting with, uh, with the midwife today, which I'll, I'll go ahead and this is something I didn't even, uh, you'll probably laugh. I didn't know anything about midwives, doulas, like none of this. I just thought, oh, doctor and hospital, like everybody else, right? Um, highly endorse looking into getting some support if you are currently pregnant or expecting a baby. So we met with our midwife today and I'm a happy man. I'm super excited for you. You're going to love being a father. It's so rad. Like it's just 
it's the best, man. You're going to absolutely adore it. What do you remember about your first, like <clears throat> your first born, like the first month, how was the adjustment? I barely remember the first three months because I shouldn't tell you this, but <laughs> so, okay. Other parents, please don't kill me, but there's a, there's a syndrome called uh, sudden infant death syndrome. Mm. And someone told me about this right from the beginning, like, like the day after the child was born. So I barely slept for the first three months. I was checking my child's breathing every 15 minutes around the clock. Like I couldn't get more than 10, 15 minutes of sleep at a time because I was always going up and checking her, her breathing. Now, obviously she's very happy and healthy now. I, I have a six-year-old and for our son, I didn't even think about it at all. Like I slept beautifully uh, when he was born, but I was super stressed when I first became a parent, you know, something would happen to my little baby. And, um, but, uh, yeah, that's what I remember from the first three months, <laughs> yeah. just being super nervous about this. It oh. seems like, I mean, that's, yeah, any any first, even our experiences so far, I'm like, we're probably acting this way just because this is our first, but here we go. So uh, good to know. As far as, I think you mentioned, well, we kind of alluded to this, but uh, you're doing something in the educational realm that I find very intriguing, especially knowing that I'm about to be a father and I'm wondering if you've built any bridges with VIT yet, or if this is something coming uh, in the Liberland direction with the educational project that you've got going on. Yeah. So a couple of years ago, I started a, a second sister company to, to my main business, my consulting firm, Expat Money. Um, we started an online high school. So it goes, as, goes from ages eight to 19. We have three levels uh, of, uh, of programming. And I partnered with a gentleman who's been in the educational space for the last 32 going on 33 years. Obviously, I'm not a teacher. <laughs> I dropped out of school. You know, my, my focus is entrepreneurship and investing as we talked about. But um, he's a really incredible curriculum designer with a background in Montessori type of programs. And he actually built Montessori schools throughout a half a dozen different states in the United States. And he was running a domestic program. And I just love the way that his brain worked and how he developed the system for this, um, for this uh, domestic school that I approached him and, uh, and decided that we wanted to partner together to take his school international. So what we created is called Expat International School, and it's uh, the, the full name is actually Expat International School of Freedom and Entrepreneurship, Love which that. I really think says so much. I mean, it really tells you what you need to know. It's you don't got to look any further. It's right there, yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. Based on libertarian values, once again, lowercase l, you know, philosophical, not political. Um, and then entrepreneurship and personal responsibility and, and creating things yourself. So we have an accredited program and a non-accredited program. Um, the program, you can find out more information at expatschool.io, expatschool.io. Uh, we got kids all over the world, like so many different countries. They do annual trips. The kids just got back a couple months ago from a trip to Greece. Uh, we're taking them down to Panama for a trip here. Um, we're going to be building our first brick and mortar school right now. Everything is online. Um, so it really speaks to the people who are moving overseas and need a viable option for their children. Like I said, from eight to 19, if you have kids in that age, you, you need an option for your kids to, to do schooling. Like I homeschool my kids and I believe in homeschooling and world schooling and unschooling and all these types of things. But you can think of us as homeschooling by professionals. So it's not based on state-run education or public education. We create our own curriculums. It's really on Socratic thoughts, so a lot of conversations about ideas. Um, really, really flexible. Uh, speaks to the children's individual learning style. And then you know what kind of lens the kids are getting their information from. You know, So if you don't I agree with a lot of this woke ideology that's happening right now, you know, our school is really great. <laughs> we don't deal in any wokeism whatsoever. So, um, so yeah, it's been, it's been really fantastic. It's such a amazing program to be involved with and to grow awareness. And it's the first program that I ever felt confident with my children going to, you know, I needed an option for homeschooling curriculum for my kids. So instead of complaining about it, I went out there and created it, you know, so that's, how I think as an entrepreneur. Love it. Yeah. 
I mean, this is definitely something always on my mind. Uh, now, again, stepping into fatherhood where I just, and I think a lot of parents right now are getting nervous in regards to the public education system or really just in general in North America, because you see all the things in the news about shootings and whatever. And obviously that's scary and, and sad, but that's actually the one thing I feel like I don't want to say that I'm not concerned about, but that's the, not the reason why I don't want my kids to <laughs> attend a school like that. Right. It's what you're talking. You said through the lens um, in which we can kind of see on the same. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the words here, but either way, I'm definitely going to be checking out expat expat. What was it? School.io. Yeah, correct. Expat school.io. And then there's tons of information on there. You know, there's a parent's guide that you can download for more resources to understand more about the school. And, you know, we can take a call together and discuss any, you know, about your kids, if they, you know, if this would be a good fit for them or not. And, you know, it's really focused on the families that are, are moving overseas, want to move overseas or the digital nomads, or even if you're domestic in the States or Canada or Europe or wherever you are, but you want your child to have a more international view of the world and want them to understand entrepreneurship and you know this type of value system, then our school is perfect for your kids. There we go. Yeah, that's that's what matters the most. And I think as um as a former athlete, that's that's like the only thing that makes me wonder, like, hmm, how do we get them? into a, a, an environment where if they want to play sports, they can do it, which who knows, maybe, you know, he won't be able to go to expat school.io until uh, 2030. So maybe there will be some type of athletics built up by then, but um, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all right. We're going to wind it down here um, again. This is Lieberland chapter one for you in many ways over the next 12 months. What do you, what else do you feel like you want to manifest here in, in the country of Lieberland? Well, I'd definitely like to make a trip out there and see it for myself. You know, I was actually starting to follow Lieberland probably about six, six plus years ago, like right, not, maybe not from day one, but pretty early on. And I think I was one of the original people to apply for citizenship. And then there was like this hiatus where I didn't hear a lot going on. I wasn't so involved. And then probably about two years ago, I got, um, got back in touch or someone put me in contact. So started to go through these process and really dig into everything and learn what's going on. So I'm, I'm really excited to go out there myself and see this. And certainly, uh, you know, once we start settling Lieberland, I'll be one of the first ones to buy a condo or, or a house or something like that and use it as another little base. You know, we've got a couple homes around the world that we spend time in. So, you know, I think it'd be amazing to, to physically get together with people and, um, share ideas and, uh, you know, swap stories and things. And I just, I really like being with people who, you know, we have this shorthand of, you know, when we speak about things and what's happening in the world and not have to explain everything from square one. Like, I just like being around people who already get it or who are already a certain uh, amount down this type of philosophy. Totally. Yeah. And there's something, there's something magical about being able to, to get out there and I'd say even get to, I got to plug my new favorite town, village city. I don't really know what it qualifies as, but Apatine, Serbia, great place to visit. And from the folks who I got to meet at, at floating man, which if you go to floating man, that LL dot land, uh, you can check out what I'm talking about there, but going to floating man and seeing how happy in general, the locals were to see the traffic to their you know, part of the world from Lieberland, there's some collaboration there that I think is already happening and continue to happen. And we really want to embrace and become as good of friends as we can with the people of, of Apatine because they're awesome. Um, and they, from what I've seen, really like Lieberland too. Amazing. Yeah. It'd be so cool to, to get to meet everyone and, you know, be part of not just our community, but hopefully be an influence on other communities and spread the word of freedom and prosperity and peace. That's right. So the best way to spread the message of freedom, prosperity, and peace, or one of the ways, is to go to expatmoneysummit.com. You got Correct. it. Yep. You can buy a free ticket. You have to go through the <laughs> process, but uh, that's the way the system works. It'll take you about 60 seconds. You can sign up. There's going to be tons of great speakers there, great things going on. November 7th to 11th, expatmoneysummit.com. Love it. Love it. Uh, Mikhail, thank you for investing your most valuable resource with us here today, your time, 
Um, any parting words of wisdom from you to Liberlandians all over the world? Not a lot from my side, just super grateful to be here and to meet so many other amazing people who are really pushing these ideas of freedom and peace and liberty uh, and prosperity in the world. You know, it really gives me so much hope and uh, and it's just so excellent to meet everyone. So if anyone's coming down to Panama, you know, check out what we're doing here in Panama. We do events in other countries in the world. I don't just work in Panama. I mean, my business is about helping people to move for you know, many countries in the world and hopefully soon settling Liberland itself. So uh, help, happy to help uh, the Liberland audience with any of these types of things. And I, I did have a conversation with Mikel in the past about, you know, myself and my wife and our family moving to, to Panama. I don't want to rule it out yet. And one cool thing he said is if you are an Amazon junkie, like so many of us uh, North Americans, I think we do have a problem with it. And I'll admit it. If you're an Amazon junk, you can still get Amazon delivered to Panama, right? <laughs> yeah, correct. Great forwarders. That's the way forwards. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. Well, thanks again, Mikel. Really appreciate it. And I uh, look forward to seeing, seeing you around a lot, to be honest. Pleasure's all mine. Thanks, Adam. Cool. All right, guys, this has been another episode of the Lieberland Show. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Adam J. Carswell. That is Mikel Thorup the Liberland representative to Panama. Make sure you go to expatmoneysummit.com to get further connected with him. Thank you for tuning in and we'll catch you in the next episode.